So as I said already, this is a small business social media toolkit. I've, uh, I've done this session, I think, four years in a row now. But every year it, you know, updates and changes as, you know, the world changes and social media networks change. But a lot of the, a lot of the general tips and tricks stay the same. They don't necessarily change uh, as much as you would think. Uh, because it's really easy to apply a lot of the tips and tricks constantly throughout different social media networks. You just kind of have to adapt your content a little bit and put a little head work into it. Um, are you guys all familiar with PodCamp? Have you been here before? Were you here yesterday? Yeah? Part, like, half and half? Okay. Um, so right now there's only two sessions going on, so it would be pretty tough, but if you don't feel like you're getting anything out of this session, feel free to give a shot to the other one, and I won't be offended at all. I I do it all the time. I love to like jump between sessions and kind of get a grasp for everything that's going on. Um, I my name's Will Reynolds Young. Uh, as I said, I've been doing this session for four years. I manage social media for a skincare brand as well as their digital presence, uh, and I have been involved with PodCamp for like six years, I think, uh, something like that. I've been presenting various sessions for about four years. Yesterday I did a WordPress session, last year I did an SEO session, and a MailChimp session about email marketing. Um, so I always talk about my knowledge as spanning like far and wide in digital gaps, but I certainly would not consider myself a foremost expert in anything. But um, feel free to throw up any questions you want because I want to you know, get your small business jumping or whatever you're looking for. So how many of you guys own a small business or looking to start a small business? Okay. It's fun. It's very fun. Um, so social media is word of mouth on steroids. If you just think about your friends and family, how you talk back and forth, usually social media is that, but just amplified. So you have a voice. It allows everyone big and little to have a voice, whether that's positive or negative is certainly up for the debate, but it gives a voice to many people. Um, and that's what you have to think about with social media. So what do you guys think the biggest asset uh, of social media is for you? Like what's the biggest asset that you can bring to the table? That I can bring that I get from it. That you bring to the table. Yeah. It's much easier than that, I promise. For me, I've found that it's hard for people to decide on someone to hire when you're looking at strangers, and social media gives me a way that I'm not a stranger to them. Yeah, that's a great. It's just yeah. making friends go on the internet. So even going further than that, the biggest asset to social media is you, because you know if you're if you're doing social media, it's about you. People like personality; they want to see personality in social media. They don't want a bland, dry feed of social media. They want they want to see personality. Um, you know that doesn't mean that you should probably go out there on your business account talking about the 2016 election, but there's plenty of other things you can talk about that created great personality, and those are the difficult choices you have to make. So, for example, as a skincare brand, uh, we support the outdoors, and we want to promote the outdoors. So, we made the choice that when President Obama was uh, supporting the national parks that we would support that initiative and of course some people didn't like that but that was very important to us as a brand and it's kind of hard to say oh don't support the national parks but obviously that does bring a negative connotation with it so those are the kind of hard decisions that you have to make as a brand in your personality as well so the biggest thing here is you got to create an action plan but that action plan is always going to change on the fly Especially when you don't know about initiatives that align with your brand objectives, like President Obama's Parks Initiative. That aligned perfectly with our skincare brand and Active Outdoors. So it was something absolutely we would promote. And it was also part of another organization that we co-collaborated with. But we'll talk about collaboration in a second here. So your action plan should be just like a marketing plan, but specifically based for social media. And I could spend an entire session on an action plan, but what I would suggest is just going to your favorite friend Google and learning there about what you should put in an action plan. Um, and part of that action plan is choosing a social network. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, or choosing what social networks. Because it's not you know, something you want to be on every social network as much as 
that would be fun. Uh, it gets way overwhelming. So I talked a little bit about partners and co-collaboration. I almost purposely wore a shirt today that had a little bit of co-collaboration going on with it. So in the social media space, don't be afraid to collaborate with other businesses, other organizations. Even if they're competing businesses, you can find objectives that align together that you can promote something. So, I mean, there's a lot of different examples, but I'm going to, again, go back to the skincare company because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, we created a, a co-collaboration with an outdoor manufacturing company, Teton Sports. That, that partnership has been extremely invaluable to us, and we you know, scratch each other's back and help each other out. We participate in each other's communities and events and promotion. Um, we also work with the Outdoor Industry Association. We're a member of theirs. So that initiative with President Obama that I was talking about was their initiative, um, and they were promoting that. And then we jumped in on that and you know, helped promote it because it was important for our environment and us as a company with sustainability. So you do still have to make sure those objectives align. There's plenty of opportunities for collaboration and co-collaboration. So might, what you might find is that another one is having two businesses collaborate together with someone else, too. So something that has been real popular as of recent, as you get more advanced with your business, is to have a school worked into your marketing strategy. Because there's tons and tons of students in classrooms that want real life experience and perhaps a classroom you might know a teacher you might know a friend of a teacher who wants to help you make a marketing plan and then you guys can go through that process together and by no means don't think that this is like a free ride there is a crap ton of work for you in in with this collaboration but it, it gives you experience it gets you a marketing plan and it gets tons of kids experiences and then they're all gonna have a really positive image of your brand and then also you're going to build your community through that. So the biggest questions that kind of come up is social media FAQ is like, how do I get more followers? And then from there it goes to likes, retweets, comments. Um, I don't want to say throw all of those out the window because they're really important. But what you want to focus on is interaction. Likes are great, but if people are just double clicking and then scrolling past, what does that do for you? Not really much at all. I mean, you can buy likes if you want to look at that, but that's a terrible idea. Just please don't do it. Um, social media is social. So the example that I love is if you go to a networking event or even here at PodCamp, if you're meeting other business owners, do you just walk up to them and hand them your business card and walk away just to promote yourself? Probably not. Probably wouldn't work out very well. Um, so with, with social media... You know, obviously your goal is to bring brand awareness and sell more product, but you need to kind of put that on a back burner in any way. You need to interact with your community. That, what I love to do is with Twitter, that's just having a conversation about with what they're having. So a lot of what Twitter ends up being is it about your day or their day. So one simple thing that I like to do um, with Twitter is, you know, a lot of people are always fundraising for things, um, whether it's their, their family member whether it's uh, American Cancer Society, whether it's brain cancer, et cetera. And one thing I like to do is I see those come through the feed, and of course we can't donate to all of them, but we have people who are social influences are in our community, and then we also have people who we just know are fans of our brand. So we just you know, throw them a small donation. It doesn't have to be huge, $20, $10 even, $15. They'll appreciate it more than you know, and then you, you, know, you still have that tax deduction. Uh, in a business sense, you're helping them out, you're helping the organization out, and it's just, you know, a friendly thing to do. It's very simple. So those kind of surprise gifts are really fun for everyone. What you're looking to create is win-win situations. Even better if you can find a win-win-win. So by donating to this charitable organization, you're creating a win for that charitable organization. You're creating a win for yourself in terms of donating to an influencer or a community member's cause. Um, and then you are creating a win for your business on their standpoint because they now have a much more positive image of you as well. Again, you can't do it for everyone, so that gets really tough sometimes. Um, so back to 
how do I get more followers? It's just interaction. They're going to come while you interact. So, for example, that company Teton Sports that we have the community with that we interact with a lot. Um, I was in Salt Lake City last week, and I was there for an outdoor retailer show. And they were hosting an event, and they were hosting a hike. And they were like, you want to do anything with this? So I'm like, definitely. You know, whatever you want to guys want to do, whether it's just giving out some products, sharing stuff. And even though these hikes and their events are not focused on selling product, people inherently want to know what you're doing there. So we were going through and we were introducing ourselves to the group, about 20 or 30 people. And I said, my name's Will Reynolds Young. I work for Skin Nourishment. Um, told them about myself, and all I did was just gloss right over, and people were pumped to hear about skin nourishment. Several people already knew about it because of the community that we were already in. Um, and then that has now translated into those social follows, those tags, those posts that we're now being tagged in, and we just built you know, another 10 great influencers. And 10 doesn't sound like a great number in terms of influencers, but one influencer is way more powerful than 10 people who are just double clicking to like all the time or, you know, just favorite something. Uh, the fact is, is that on Twitter, for example, and this goes across social networks, most people on there are just looking. They're not doing anything there. They're not posting. I can't remember the exact statistic, but I want to say it's about 50% of people on Twitter have never posted anything. They just look at Twitter. Um, I have many friends who I know and love dearly, and all they do is just look at my feed. And they'll, they'll be like, hey, I saw that really cool thing you posted. And I'll be like, you didn't favorite it, you didn't like it, you didn't comment on it, and now you're saying it in person? You know, that's great. I love to hear that, but I would have loved to have had that conversation online so it can extend to the other people. So that's kind of a battle that you have to engage in. Um, so... How many of you guys have physical businesses or are considering physical businesses? None? Yes. Thinking for Okay. I'll go, I'll touch on that quickly. So Skin Nourishment, we have distributors in 30 countries, and then we have one single physical location. So something really important about social media is if you have a business already, there's already people on there that know you. So trying to find them, whether that might be through targeted ads or whether if you have a physical location, use that to your advantage. You know, when they come in, say, hey, would you like to get 5% off? Um, and if you give us a like or a follow or a retweet or something like that, it's not going to mean that much then. I mean, that's certainly not a long-term strategy, but just finding them and grabbing them and then being able to pull them in is a huge deal. Because if they're already a fan of yours, as you know, uh, customer acquisition costs a lot more than customer retention. So if they're already your fan, you know, keep them there. Get them more entrenched in your culture. So a lot of people are worried about being annoying or repetitive on social media. And I can promise you that especially in this day and age with Facebook, you're probably not going to get there. It takes a lot of work to be annoying and repetitive. I'm not telling you to go and post the same thing every single day at the same time. Please do not do that. But it is 100% okay and 100% a good idea to recycle content that you have. Um, and especially looking at stuff that you have sent out before, whether that be content you've written or content that you've reposted, and seeing how that content has worked with your followers. The number of clicks it's gotten, the number of retweets it's gotten, the number of favorites it's gotten, the number of shares it's gotten, etc. Easier said than done on so, some social networks. So there's a, there's a gentleman named Gary Vaynerchuk, which is very, he's very well known in the social media industry. He's done crazy things, and uh, he always talks about jab, 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 right hook. So the jabs are you giving value to your customers, and then the right hook is the ask. And as you notice, the right hook is at the end. And there's lots of information in sharing before and interacting before you get to that ask. So don't think that tomorrow you're going to get into social media and you're going to just kill it. It takes time to build up a social media following. It takes a lot of work. It's effort. Um, and whether that be time or money or both, it takes a lot. Um, a great example that I like to share is that 
I was in Salt Lake City a couple of years ago, and my dad was with me and my brother was with me, and I'm like a chronic worker, so anywhere I am, I'm always thinking about work. So I was like, let's just do a quick meetup here on the fly in Salt Lake City at this place that I know everyone loves. I started tweeting out to people, inviting everyone who wanted to come. I got like 20 yeses. And my dad was setting me up for failure. He's like, don't be surprised if only a few people show up. And I was like, no, no, I know that these people are showing up. They've been our brand advocates for years, and they want to meet us. They want to hang out. And this was before I even told them that we were buying them free food. I didn't even tell them that we were giving them free food. That was an idea that came later. I was like, hey, why not buy them a burrito? Sure. So every single person showed up, every single one. And that was because of the work that I put into it. Now, here comes the sad part of that story. Uh, over the next year, two years, I got sick. I am the sole social media guy for Skid Nourishment. So our, our interaction went like this. You know, it, it was like this, and then it plateaued, and then just went down. So you have to keep putting that work in. Um, keep making that connection. That's about not letting those social networks run dry. This is, this is a long game. You're not just going to do social media for a year and then stop. Um, and I say this not because I want to scare you, I want to be realistic with you. Um, it's not something that you're going to just do today and get a huge return tomorrow. It takes time. But those relationships that you build will be equal to those relationships that you have in person, and hopefully you have the opportunity to bring those relationships into person through in-person meetups like PodCamp, if one of your huge fans was here, or um, that outdoor retailer show that we go to in Salt Lake City. So anywhere we go, we try and meet up with people and say, hey, you know, we have this booth and looking at our feed and seeing, oh, these people are here and inviting them to our booth. So it's not just expecting them to see that um, we are there to invite them. So what do you guys think are the top social media sites? Um, and we're looking at the world and we're going to look at the United States as well. Any others you want to? throw out there? Instagram? I like it. <laughs> it's on there. Reddit? Okay. Any others I want to throw out there? All the chats. Periscope? Asterisk, just everything chat. I'm going to create a new social network tomorrow. It's going to be called Will Chat. It's going to be a direct chat with me. Uh, okay. So, First, we got the graph of, oh, that shows up really well. That's good. Uh, we have the graph of social networks as of April 2016. I swear I tried to find a reasonable graph of recent because, you know, this changes constantly. Um, but I just wasn't happy with the other ones I found. And depending on who you ask, you're going to get a different statistic because these, even though they say active users in millions, they're not reported on a regular basis and they're not required to report them. So... Literally, people are guessing based on a bunch of data they have. So you could find this chart a billion times over. But fun thing about this, the top three are the same company. Uh, so chat app, chat app. In fact, yeah. Um, so on here, across the world, you see a, a ton of chat apps. Like, I think someone threw out WeChat. We got... Um, the other fun thing is you'll see, again, we got Facebook, 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 Facebook. And now the other thing that comes down here that's really fun is then you have Microsoft right here. So Microsoft owns Skype. And then you have Yahoo right here, which was just acquired by Verizon. So to think that like these social networks are really far and wide, obviously there's tons of them. Um, is kind of crazy because they're all, you know, the, the top is dominated by Facebook at this point. Um, so I'm going to go to the next one here because that one is a little more interesting or what I want to focus on, I suppose. What is QQ? <clears throat> it's a social network in another country. Um, I was going to say a bunch of the, like half of that since it's world is social networks in another country. I believe WeChat is really popular in China. Okay, that's what I thought, yeah. QQ is basically the Chinese Yeah, I, I thought that. Um, so this is in order from here and then goes to the next side. So again, you got Facebook. This is where it's really fun because you get YouTube, but
but YouTube is obviously worldwide, but as you can tell, it wasn't really on the other list. Its audience is largely based in the U.S. because there's tons of other video sharing sites. You got Twitter, but the really interesting part about Twitter is if you look at a graph of interaction over time and network growth, Twitter's is like this, whereas you look at Instagram, it's like that. So I don't want to say Twitter is completely dying because that's not true, but it's just not experiencing the same growth potential that the other networks have had. The really fun part about these statistics, they're all well and good to look at. They're really fun to look at. I'll look at them all day long and talk about them all day long. But you need to choose what is best for your business. No one can tell you what's best for your business. I can just give you information about these social networks and how they work. And the other thing is, there are, as you can tell, a billion social media networks up here that some you might know, some you, you do know, some you might not know at all or never even heard of, and some you might think do nothing, like Google+. Uh, and I assure you, despite Google+, Plus being almost completely defunct and seems that Google is completely going away from it, it is still really important in an SEO sense. And Google, like, continuously has been repackaging and packaging Google+, Plus in terms of the site. So, like, Google Plus used to be totally integrated with their messenger service Hangouts, but it seems like they have branched that off. And then Google Plus also seemed to be completely entrenched in places, or when you use Google Maps, Google Places shows up. So it's really interesting to see how that shapes and forms. But to say that you, you don't want to be on Google Plus at all would probably do you a disservice to at least cross-post content there. Um, so I had already mentioned that uh, Yahoo owns uh, Tumblr, I believe, on the last graph. They also own Flickr up here. Um, and then they were just bought by Verizon. So that's another fun one. Someone had mentioned Reddit, too. That's a fun one as well. A large amount of our traffic for skin nourishment comes from wet Reddit. Nothing to our dealing, because it's not really a social network you can advertise or penetrate in any way. So... Speaking of audience penetration, here is talking about engagement of social networks. So that should be pretty easy to see. So you can see the reach among 18 to 34. So a prime demographic for many people, obviously not the demographic that everyone's looking at, but kind of the coveted demographic at this point. Um, and then average monthly minutes per visitor. So you can tell you got all these social networks bunched up here, and then all the way up here you got Facebook. I am like the worst offender. I wish I could destroy Facebook, but I have way too many things on there, and Messenger, and oh, it's terrible. I'm so stuck in Facebook. I'm probably like this statistic right here alone. This is probably just me. Um, my, uh, my Snapchat usage is probably like up here too. I'm way too much on Snapchat as well. But as you see here, you got a lot of social networks that are, you know, in a small range here, a relatively small range. And again, this is changing every day. So this landscape is just insane. Instagram used to be way back here, and now it's shooting up. And it should be very interesting to see what Instagram does with Instagram stories, which is really similar to Snapchat. Um, you got Twitter up here, but I expect this number to just keep going back here at this point. Not that it's not a good social network to be on. A lot of people like poo poo LinkedIn and Google Plus, but both of them are you know way up here. They're still important. Um, you got like the female audience's favorite Pinterest here. Not that there's not males on there, but it's like eighty percent females at this point on Pinterest. And you got Vine and Tumble are hanging out back there. But I think what's really interesting to me personally is I know people of all these social networks listed on here, I know people who deeply love all of them and are really deeply interested in all of them. So I know people who spend all of their time between Pinterest and Facebook or all of their time between Tumblr and Pinterest, and then they're not on Snapchat at all. So you can find really engaged communities in all of these. So don't, don't let the numbers here of what people are using it dictate what you're doing too much. Obviously you want people to be there, so don't go on uh, Peach, if you've ever even heard of that, um, and 
you know, you probably don't want to spend a ton of time on Google+, but it's still important because Google owns the internet, basically, in terms of SEO. Um, so I'm going to try and move forward here in terms of about the social networks. We got one more, or two more statistic slides, I believe. Um, so I talked about like the 18 to 34 demographic, and sometimes people will say, well, my demographic isn't on social media. Um, and as you can tell here, we got the 18 to 34 demographic up here, or just basically lives on social media. And you got the other three demographics down here, but look at this, look at this 65 plus demographic right here. 2006, they were like, uh, yeah, maybe we'll try this out. And then they're like, oh, geez, my entire family's on here. I gotta, I gotta go on it. 65 plus is the largest demographic on social media growing, the largest growing demographic on social media. So to say that your demographic isn't on social media would be to say that hey, there's no people in the street or something like that. Just, um, it's another fun chart. I like charts a little too much. Um, you got a nice, uh, another graph that shows you about the active users on social media by age. So I had just mentioned there's these demographics in terms of what they're using social media, but look at this. Like, you can see this 65 or 55 to 64 demographic, and it's constant in many ways across these. I mean, obviously there's some change, but it's not like, it's not like they're drastically on Facebook over Pinterest, but look at this. They're like, you know, very indistinguishable. So it's percentage points, like few percentage points. I mean, it's really strikingly similar across different age groups. It just shows that social networks are now at a stage of maturity where they give opportunities to reach all age and gender groups. I mean, the exceptions in this way are Instagram and Tumblr, which are clearly younger demographics. So you got Instagram, Tumblr, uh, Snapchat skews that way as well. But uh, you still have plenty of people on there, other age demographics. So you can find them. And the last statistical chart, I promise, but perhaps my favorite, and I used to show this one first, because this one's updated every year and just really awesome uh, from a really great site. So you have about 7.3 billion people in the world. Maybe we made it to 7.4 billion now because this is from January. Um, you got the digital penetration of users right around 46% at 3.4 billion. Of those people, 2.3 billion are active on social media. But this is where I really go towards. Look at this. The number of active and unique social media users. It's insane. A lot of people are using social media on their mobile devices. They're not sitting at their computer very much and typing away on Facebook. They're Instagramming and Snapchatting away while they're at conferences like you're here today. I hope if you anyone did that, I got a really good Snapchat filter, I'm hoping. Which one are you looking at? 2.4 and 2.3. What did you say was the difference? Where do you see it? Oh, the 3.4 uh -huh. and 2.3? So the 3.4 is internet users. And then this is active social media users. So the people are active on social media. Sorry, uh, I'm asking you what's your Twitter and Twitter. W. Reynolds Young. It's W R E Y N O L D S Y O U N G. It's way too long. <laughs> I, I've practiced it for many years. <laughs> there is another R. Yeah. So I've talked a lot about social media and content. Um, but what kind of content do people want to read and see? You've got uh, stories, helpful tips, news and gossip, and how-to. And again, you have to make the choice as a business owner of what type you want. So at Skin Nourishment, we kind of share a little bit of all of this. We stay away from a lot of news and gossip because that kind of gets really controversial and that's not really a space you want to be in, but that could be your thing. That could work out great for you. Um, so stories. 
we love to share stories about our customers and what they're doing, whether it be about how they're doing with the product or whether it's just what they're doing in general. We've shared stories about how people have scaled mountains and just overcome incredible obstacles, and they're just really fun to hear, and they're really great to share. Um, we've shared stories about cancer patients, have, how I've used our product, and in many ways I, I feel bad sharing them because like, I don't want to use this horrible thing in someone's life, but these people want to share. They, they want to be your brand advocates. They want to know that some, something has helped them a lot. Um, helpful tips. So one of our most shared posts of all time was one of the simplest things ever. We uh, just put up a recipe of an electrolyte cocktail that replaces Gatorade of just simple water, lemon, honey, and salt. It wasn't difficult at all, and it was a recipe that my aunt had come up with. It wasn't anything groundbreaking or insane at all, but it was just really helpful and cool to share. Um, news and gossip, so that gets to what's relevant today, um, whether that be that you know, the president is visiting the national parks and supporting them, or whether that be um, the climbing is in the coming into the Olympics in 2020, so we actually have a post scheduled for a little bit here soon, I think, if I remember right, um, that is coming up to ask, what do you guys think about climbing in the Olympics in 2020? And there's no doubt that there's going to be people on both sides of the fence, but we want people to have that conversation. Uh, and then how to. So we've been toying with uh, how to make your own skincare products. And that kind of seems like um, something you wouldn't want to do because then they're not going to buy your product, but that's that's not true at all. Um, if you can help guide them in what you're doing, they might you know become way more interested in what you're doing. So those are a bunch of different types of content that you can share. And the interesting part is you, you do need to kind of adapt this different type of content across social media, but you can share it across. So we had talked about social media being built on mobile, and I just wanted to throw this statistic in here. This is uh, an actual statistic from the, the Skin Nourishment website. So um, not necessarily social media, but just the website in general. And it shows you the desktop visitors was 56%. But when you add this mobile and tablet number together, it's over 40%. I mean, like, nearly half of people are visiting on some kind of mobile device, whether it be a tablet or a, a cell phone, um, and that leaves margin of error because I like to trick these browsers into thinking I'm a computer all the time. Um, but then you have the social networks that were built completely on mobile, and some of them only work on mobile. Uh, so Instagram has adopted a lot more to desktop, but it's still mobile completely. Vine and Snapchat, all very mobile, and a lot of these platforms, they'll launch only on mobile, and the only place you can use it is on your mobile device, and that's where they build their following, and then they adapt to a wider audience on a desktop. But as you can see, this is just a website um, that your audience might necessarily not even be using a desktop. My aunt, when she travels, she doesn't even take a laptop with her anymore. She takes her iPad and her phone and does everything on there. I wish I was cool enough to do that, but I need a laptop. So what networks do I choose? Um, so... This is where it comes really difficult. You gotta make really tough decisions about where you're gonna be. And you gotta make sure not to overrun yourself. You gotta make sure not to kill yourself in terms of social media. And there's a breaking point there. If you do a good job, one social network can really blow up and do really well for you, but you don't want to abandon those other two that you've been working on. That's where it comes in really important. So we had talked about how Instagram has been growing drastically and Twitter has been falling off. But then another one that's been growing drastically is Snapchat. But now it's really interesting to see, well, Instagram Stories is coming around. Well, how is that going to change? So you always got to be reassessing your strategy on how this is going to go. If you're already on Snapchat, are you going to use Instagram Stories? Are you going to abandon your Snapchat? Are you going to do both? Are you going to push the same content to both? There's a lot of questions I can't answer in the next 15 minutes. Jeez. Huh. So... The core of your social strategy should involve your own website. Um, if you don't have one, that's probably something that you should start off with. Um, whether it be a quick page you throw up, um, 
I am totally blanking on the name right now. I can envision it. Wix. 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 And Squarespace is another good one. Both really easy places to throw up a neat, nice small business website that you can do yourself. Um, so your newsletter or blog, if you have one of those yet, or you get one of those started, one of the most powerful things in social media is, as I had mentioned, is the own content you create. So that recipe that we put out, those stories that we put out, and they're not necessarily all things that we're doing. They're things that we're collaborating on with, with our influencers and our athletes that we have, or our friends and family even, and how they interact with the brand. So, so take advantage of those resources to be able to grow your presence, your own blog, and send out a newsletter. We send out a newsletter on a monthly basis. That's another decision you have to make. But these all go into your social media strategy. So an important part is link backs. Um, that's how you grow your SEO. That's how you, you know, get the sales. Because if they're, if they're just chilling on Twitter, uh, while Twitter did have viable posts, I think they just removed them. They're, they're not working out very well for them. Um, they got to go to your website to buy your product or contact your business, basically. Even if they do buy it on Facebook, they're eventually probably going to end up on your website anyway. Hopefully, that's the goal. Um, so getting those link backs. So different ways that you can do this is in those collaborations with other businesses, you can write guest posts for them. You can maybe do a Snapchat takeover or a Twitter takeover or an Instagram takeover. And that way you're intertwining your communities. The last thing, obviously after you've created this content, is to add this content to your fan pages. I didn't really find a, a word that I liked. I didn't want to say social networks because that seems weird. I don't know. Um, but by adding your content to your fan pages, I mean properly sharing it on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, wherever that may be that you're sharing it. So you're, you're going through a cycle here. You have your website. You're creating content. You're sending it out to your newsletter. You're asking those people to share it. You're linking back to your website on social media and sharing it on your own social media channels. So I'm going to go here quickly through different social media sites. I don't know what just happened. Oh, that was a weird blank slide, apparently. Huh. Uh, so I'm going to go through the social media sites here. If there's one that you want to know more about, feel free to ask a question before or after, but I want to make sure I get through each of them. Um, and I will be around for a while. So, uh, so Twitter, it's 140 character updates. And what gets really fun here is, you know, retweeting or resharing other posts. We could get into a really long discussion about here whether it's actually 140 characters at this point. But um, the idea with it is it's, it's short sentences. It's short, quick thoughts. So you might not be able to put that whole long blog to post title that you thought of as your, your title. Um, what really works well with Twitter and Facebook is using quotes from your article or using quotes from the articles that you're sharing about your community. Um, there's great sites that allow you to create images with those quotes, too, if you don't already have an image to go with your post. Um, you can use search.twitter.com, and search.twitter.com allows you to look what's going on. So before I came here today at PodCamp, I searched the PodCamp hashtag and see it was here. I was doing it last night, and that's a, a great way to interact if you're doing local events <coughs> or hanging out at local stuff, whether it's before, after, or during the event. And then the last thing, one of my favorite things, this is how we got involved with that business, Teton Sports, is a Twitter chat. So Teton Sports hosts the weekly Twitter chat where it's just a bunch of people coming on Twitter at a certain time to talk about a specific topic. So Teton Sports' topic is hiker chat. So they use hashtag hiker chat. And that happens every Friday at noon. And it's just their community interacting about hiking. And they post questions and the audience answers them. I love their format because it's not in-your-face advertising. They strictly discourage brands that involve themselves in it from advertising on their chat. Um, they allow the conversation to happen organically. Um, so there's this website right here, tweetreports.com slash Twitter chat schedule. You don't really need to write down that whole thing. You can just search that and get a tweet. Yeah. What was the name of the company that you guys in Twitter chat? Uh, Teton Sports. They make wonderful backpacks and camping gear and... They're sold at Cabela's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, also sold on Amazon, actually. Uh, so that's a great place to find Twitter chats. There are Twitter chats for more topics than you could ever imagine or I could even fathom. It's great if you can get involved in a weekly Twitter chat or at least show up once a month to get involved with that community. And then maybe you find yourself in the future making your own Twitter chat. That's a huge commitment, but a possibility. So you got Facebook, the behemoth of social networks. The really fun part about Facebook is in a lot of ways, when you use Facebook, you're connected to Instagram because Instagram and Facebook continue to integrate further and further. So pretty much always with social networks, images added to posts perform better. Furthermore to that, if you're making YouTube videos, uploading them directly to Facebook performs better as well. You want to use the tools that you have with inside that social network for the content. So that might mean that you have to upload your YouTube video to Facebook and a snippet to Instagram. It's a little extra work, but that reusing of content across social networks is going to save you a lot of time and get you a lot of bang for your buck in terms of punch. So if you're thinking about a campaign that you're doing or an advertising campaign you're trying to work in, try and think of how you can apply this to Twitter, to Facebook, to Instagram, whatever social networks that you're using. Maybe it's Snapchat and you provide them a snippet of behind the scenes as you're editing the video. And then when the video goes live, you say, hey, screenshot this link and you can go and see the whole video. You can then keep teasing them with little uh, snippets of the video that are interesting in themselves, but then people will be more inclined to go and watch the video as well. So allow these social networks to work off of each other. Always, as, as tough as it might be, appeal to friends and family. Use your own personal assets to your advantage, sharing content on your personal page, asking your friends and family to help you out. Um, at that same token, if you have great customers that you know for years, don't be afraid to say, hey, do you mind if throwing us a review on our Facebook page? We'd really appreciate it. Um, I did this the other day. I, I turned, uh, we had a customer who bought a product and it kept melting and shipping because it was going to Las Vegas and it was like 130 degrees. And we sent them a replacement for free. And they're like, hey, do you mind, you know, no, no pressure here. You don't have to do it. We're still sending you the product. Do you mind going on our Amazon page where you bought that product before and it didn't work out? you mind writing us a review? Like, it really helps us. We really appreciate it. But what do you know? The next day, there was a wonderful review on Amazon about our great customer service, our great products, and how we handled their situation with love and care. Um, obviously, to get those great reviews, you have to handle the situations with love and care. So that's, that's another thing. And you're going to get negative reviews. They happen. Don't try and squash them. Try and fix them. Try and interact with them. So again, with Facebook, still short and sweet. Um, scary thing here is Facebook has the boost. I don't know why I put boast. Uh, I'm going to boast on Facebook, I guess. Uh, so don't overuse the boost feature. Um, if you really want to get into Facebook advertising and spending money on Facebook, use what's called dark posts, so targeting directly to your audience. There's tons of great blog posts about it, but... Essentially, it just creates an ultra-targeted space for you to promote. Um, you also have ways to drive people directly to your website. There's the Facebook Ads Manager, and if you want to actually spend money on ads, that's where you should live, not by boosting posts that you have. You got LinkedIn, which we had talked about how a lot of people think about how it's dying, but it's very much not at all. Um, the greatest thing about LinkedIn a trick that I've learned recently is that if you are writing posts already, go ahead and put those posts on your personal LinkedIn if they're relevant, because then it blasts out to your network automatically. And that's a really great tip for right now. Using your personal LinkedIn to build your own business brand, especially if you're the entrepreneur, is a huge asset. In terms of business pages, I wish I had more for you there. I haven't really found a huge use there beyond LinkedIn groups, which are great to interact with and build your business that way. So it you know, also depends on, is your business business to business or business to consumer, a little mix of both? You got Google Plus. I already mentioned, you know, you want to keep the Google gods happy with their SEO, sharing your post on there, setting up your Google Plus page properly, especially if you have uh, a local business. But... The last thing you want to do in your business is to piss off the Google gods. It is just not a good idea at all. 
Just don't do it. And if you do, just do everything you can to fix that. Because if Google lists your site as malicious, then no one's going to visit it. If, if Google doesn't see your site at all and doesn't think that it's there, then you know, you're missing the largest search engine of all time. The number one search engine is Google. Any guess what the number two search engine is? Yes. YouTube is the number two search engine. It's not Bing. It's not Yahoo. None of those things. So you got Pinterest. Pinterest is really fun. As I had mentioned, it's a female audience. It's very, very, very powerful for e-commerce with buyable pins where people can buy right on Pinterest. 88% um, of people purchase a product that they pin. And once they start purchasing from Pinterest and using Pinterest, they do it over and over and over and over and over again. People deeply entrenched in Pinterest love Pinterest and they just go at it. The funniest thing ever to me is uh, I have a personal Pinterest account and I have a business Pinterest account. That's always a fun thing to navigate when you're hanging out online trying to keep those accounts separate. My tip is use two separate browsers. Me was not doing that at the time. Our most repinned post ever is on my personal account. It's been repinned like several thousand times and it wasn't even on the business account. But it still got repinned, so I'll take it. It's not like I'm going to delete it now. Uh, so we got Instagram, one of my favorites. As we had mentioned, Instagram now has stories. If you already had an audience there, jumping on stories might have been a great idea. Ironically, a day or so before stories launched, we started using Snapchat as skin nourishment. It didn't go very well for us. Um, so you're going to have those blunders. We haven't really decided whether you're going to use stories or not. I might give it a shot one of these days, but... Um, you don't have to use all the new flashy features of every social media network, but getting in early on them does really great for you. So if you can recognize that a social media network is growing for your following and jumping on it before everyone else is there is a huge asset. Um, again, the, the, big in, the big thing with Instagram is that you can't put clickable links inside posts. But what you can say is, link is in my bio, click there. And that is, that's super effective, but then if they go back later, then they can't really get that link. So make sure you put the link both there and then say link in description, click link in bio. Give them that call to action, but then still make a short link with a service like Bitly, B-I-T-L-Y, to make it clickable and easy. You got Vine, Snapchat, YouTube, we've talked about a ton. Vine is six second videos, Snapchat is 10 second videos. And YouTube is unlimited, but please do not go upload like a three-hour video because no one's going to watch it. Um, the sweet spot for YouTube tends to be like one to three minutes. Some people would say three to five minutes. Um, for all of these, it's again about interactive. Vine tends to be a lot more funny or fun content. Snapchat for brands tends to be a lot more behind the scenes or following through the day. YouTube could be any variety, but again, remember that YouTube is the number two search engine. So don't be afraid to just take your wonderful mobile device that you have and make sure it's in landscape mode when you're recording. Yes. Um, and then just shoot a fun video with your friends and your family talking about the product or a quick behind the scenes. Those raw, really quick, fun videos are great. Um, you can get really great videos on your iPhone or your Samsung Galaxy device, or whatever device you have. The new smartphones have great cameras and great microphones to be able to accomplish that. So you don't have to hire a video production company. And then there's great, really easy editing apps on your phone where you can just clip either side and then you know maybe add a background check right inside YouTube with their free service. It's, it's very simple. Just make sure that you're recording in the correct orientation. Otherwise, I will come and find you. Apps for management, you got Buffer, Hootsuite, Sprout Social, TweetDeck, Facebook Scheduling, all really great apps, all do very similar things, it's a matter of preference. Right now, I use Sprout Social for managing our social inbox. It's an expensive service, it's like $50 a month. We have so much social coming in, it is totally worth it to make sure I don't miss things, probably not something you want to start off with. Buffer is really great for creating a queue of tweets that go out, and you can kind of shuffle them up, and then you can see and easily reschedule them. And it always, always, always schedule directly on Facebook when you're scheduling. 
Uh, don't use another tool to schedule on Facebook. It's just not going to get the reach that it does uh, if you schedule natively on Facebook. TweetDeck and Buffer and Hootsuite all do Facebook, Twitter, those kind of things. When it comes to Instagram, you're just not going to schedule anything. When it comes to Vine, you're not going to schedule anything. When it comes to Snapchat, you're not really going to schedule anything. There's tips and tricks to get around it. In general, it's just better to work within the ecosystem that those apps create rather than trying to get around it. Tools. Canva, really, really great for creating uh, pictures and stuff. Really powerful. Has templates all built in so you can create a quick image. You got Buffers Pablo, same thing, but a lot more simplified. Really great for quotes. Um, you got, I want to say, PictoChart, the way that you can create your own infographics. If you've never seen those, those are those really long things that have a bunch of information on them and just look really cool. We created one about sunscreen um, that was really successful. Uh, Google Analytics. Website stats, I think that's probably been mentioned here at PodCamp to the point where Google's ears are burning down the street and they're just pumped to hear it. Uh, it's free for your site up to some insane amount of visitors. Uh, it is, provides you an overwhelming amount of information, but definitely the first thing you should set up on your website. Talk water alerts or Google alerts. This can allow you to monitor the phrase of your business if people are not directly tagging you. If this, then that um, allows you to create recipes to automatically send content. So for example, if you post a picture on Facebook, then it'll automatically post natively on Instagram. Not necessarily the best idea ever, but there's some really fun recipes in there you can try out. Sometimes for me, it's just about saving content. So I actually save every picture that we get tagged in. Um, Jing for screen recording. Um, we use this as like a customer service tool if someone's confused on how to use the website or a coupon. Dropbox, really great for sharing files. And then my super secret one, followup.cc, allows you to CC this address and easily follow up in emails. It's a bunch more tools. Uh, so Pocket allows you to share things and save things for later. Facebook Save obviously shares right inside Facebook, so you can save the stuff for later. It's a little carrot symbol. Um, so this is where you can maybe find content. If you can't always create your own content, like that gets insanely difficult. So be sharing other people's content, whether it's your influencers, whether it's your friends and family who do the same thing, whether it's other businesses. If they're you know if they're creating great content and they align with your values, don't be afraid to share their content. Uh, Zite is a way you can get curated news. So I have like a climbing site so I can see everything about climbing uh, since our product has to do a lot with climbing. Reddit has all different sub-communities for different topics. So there's a subreddit for Pittsburgh. There's one for climbing. There's one for skincare. It keeps going on and on. Help a reporter out. Get some inquiries from reporters. See if they're asking about anything that they need information from that you can get your business in the press, and then another way to build your social media. Got Buzz Sumo, Twitter List, and Twitter Moments. So Twitter List is a great way to specifically follow people that you want to be able to reply. So I have a bunch of super secret Twitter lists of competitors to see what they're up to. Um, influencers, possible influencers, connections. So those are kind of things. Um, and then Twitter Moments is built right inside Twitter about what's happening now. So, what not to do, don't set up an automated feed. I think I maybe have gotten through that point in many ways. Um, don't leave networks unattended. Don't just let it completely run dry and be dead to the world. It just doesn't look good. And then make sure you're consistent about filling out your profiles. Keep your messaging across social networks. Use the same logo or image for each one of your profile pictures so people can recognize you. And then the last slide, sources of information. I'm certainly, as I mentioned, not the foremost expert in social media. I just happen to guess better than most people. I hate the word social media expert, which is what people like to call people all the time. But these are a bunch of people that I like to follow um, in terms of what's going on in social media. So the social media examiner, um, entrepreneur.com and their social media section. 
HubSpot is amazing for marketing and looking at inbound links and targeting. They have a bunch of tools too. Duct Tape Marketing has awesome solutions for free. Free doesn't mean like 100% free. You got to put your time into it. Uh, I had already mentioned Gary V. He has a bunch of books about social media that are great. Uh, Scott Stratton on marketing he has a really fun video about QR codes that I like to refer to all the time about how QR codes kill kittens. Um, and then Buffer, I had mentioned them as a tool to use. I had mentioned Buffer Pablo. They also happen to have an amazing blog about social media, and they're really good at explaining when new features come out as well.